Well, as you can see, winter has arrived to the mountain already. About a month earlier than last year, we got our first big storm, I think it was around December 10th last year. Yeah, we've got about 14 inches of accumulation so far. You know, it's packed a little bit now, but I think we're gonna be down to ATV access pretty soon. This keeps up, you know. And the tracks are gonna get put on the Ranger. The birds are all over the place. The tracks are gonna get put on the Ranger here soon, so we'll be in good shape for going on and off the mountain. We've been having six red squirrels and three gray squirrels feeding on the ground out here. And I enjoy watching their antics. They don't attempt to get in the camp. They're fine out here and they clean up the ground. And that way I'm not feeding the mice. And it's all, it's all good. But then the other day there was a big patch of blood in the snow out here and I knew a hawk got one. At least that's what my thoughts were. And a few days later, there was more blood and our squirrel count's been going down and now all I see is two reds. I don't like the birds of prey taking them like that, but it's part of nature and you just gotta roll with it. And I really thought it was a hawk, but I came out yesterday and there was an owl up in the tree out here watching over the feeding station, you know. It's kinda cool to see them. And then this morning, I was filling the wheelbarrow with firewood. I just happened to look up and a bald eagle was coming right through the yard like this. I've never seen one here like that. It was awesome to see that. What a gift. It was a, a immature one because his head wasn't all white yet, but he was huge nonetheless. He was full size. And I think it's like a year or two before their heads turn white, something like that. But anyway. Winter is here. We're gonna have to go get more bird seed because they're really going through it. That's life on the mountain. So just out walking Frankie this morning and I come across some really fresh critter tracks. Upon first glance I thought it was just a canine that came across the road because it was loping across leaving four tracks and then a space and four more tracks and so on. But upon closer inspection I can see that it was a fisher. So I'm going to take you along, we'll follow it a little bit and I'll show you how I decipher that it was a fisher and not a canine. I'll share a little woods lore with you this morning. So come on. This fisher just came through. Their tracks are very dog-like, but you can tell here that it's a low animal. It's a low animal. See, he went under that. A taller animal would have brushed some of the snow off. Their tracks are very wide. You see that? It's Frankie's investigating here. He says, yeah, Dad. Let's go follow him for a little ways. Find some more indications. See the fisher come bounding through here. You can see the, the tracks. You just like, you can tell the gate. He bounced. Four tracks, four tracks. Ba-boop, ba-boop, ba-boop. And then he went under that, and Frankie's going to go over it. See? Frankie's demonstrating. <laughs> see, he messed all the snow up on top. Yeah. There you see where the fisher went down through there. A coyote would have knocked the snow off of the branches there. Now you see the spot right there where his track left like a drag mark. Another indication that it's a short-legged animal. See, he's bouncing along here. He jumped there, four, four, four. But their gait will also be a two-track pattern where you just see two tracks, two tracks, two tracks, two tracks. But right here, he's doing a little bit different 
trotting along kind of thing, hobbling along. You really see how wide his tracks are here. Yeah. And he bumped that, and the snow come off of that. We're right behind him. He's not very far ahead. Their tracks are very round-like, and if they're covered a little bit in snow, they might resemble the bobcat, but the bobcat's gait is usually single file, tracks in single file. And the fisher will run a two-track pattern and a four-track pattern like this. <laughs> Look at this here. Got partridge running here. And the fisher is right there. That's a dangerous game he's playing. See, the partridge is running. See how far apart his tracks are? One's here, about the length of my hand, and there's another one there. But further up, we'll probably find where he's gone back to walking, unless it took off. Let's go find out. All kinds of wildlife right near the cabin. I love it. All right. So there's the fisher right there going through. The partridge walked up over here. He nibbled at the fern. I didn't know they ate that stuff. Okay, he nibbled some of that. Then he walked here. Okay. He walked in over there. And then it flushed right here. That's the wings taken off. Boom. His feet hit the ground there. Some more wing here. And then he went airborne. <laughs> and the fisher kept on going. This is kind of fun this morning. All kinds of activity out here. Now here's another spot. You see those little raised sections of snow? Right there? Frankie's going to go and look. He's going to demonstrate. He, he's going to... Oh. <laughs> She says, I know, it's, I know it's down there, Dad. I get him. But that's a, that's a mouse. Don't, yeah, stay, stay. That's a mouse traveling beneath the snow out here in the open to protect itself from hawks. Because a lot of times hawks will perch right up here, the treetops, watching over the road for chipmunks and squirrels. Now this mouse here knows that and he's traveling beneath the snow. So let's uncover some of this. You see? He's got a trail. See that? See? He's got a trail under the snow. See? See that? See? I know he's in there, Dad. I know he's in the hall. I find him, Dad. I get him. <laughs> oh, find the trail, Frankie. You show him. Show everybody where the trail is. <laughs> Can you sniff him out? Find him, Frankie. See? See the trail over there? <laughs> you find him, Frankie. You get him. Now there's some more partridge tracks right there. And he came and he hung out here and he pooped. <laughs> yeah. See the tracks over there? He walked up, came down the stone wall, stopped here and pooped and then flew off. See the wing mark right there where, where he took off and he flew that way. Frankie's gonna say, hey, I want some of that poop. Get out of there, you <laughs> crazy. He says, oh, yeah, I want that. Where's the M&M's? Where's the M&M's? <laughs>I want to share some more upgrades to the bucket trap. <laughs> now I've already proven that the bucket works awesome with just water, a bunch of seed, and a ramp. That's all you need. But then I put the camera on it and I was seeing that there was the mice were walking the rim, hanging down, and I thought I was missing a lot of mice. So then I did the upgrade with the foil all the way around. My success went down by complicating the system, so I'm complicating it some more. Because <laughs> I know people want me to complicate everything. <laughs>
So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to put the ramp up right here. And I removed the tape over here. So it's like the original setup. So if some want to walk the rim and hang down, they're welcome to do that. Then over here, I made the foil tape twice as wide and I sloped it down a little bit more and I put this little doohickey on here. This is just a wine cork smeared with peanut butter and Lord knows we've got plenty of those wine corks around. <laughs> Living up on the mountain, you know. So, I'm going to set this up, put the camera on it and we'll see what happens. We'll give it a go. Now my first bucket trap was set up with just a ramp, water, and seed, and it was successful. But I was amazed when I saw that they were hanging down into the bucket by just their toenails. Some would hang and get away, and others would fall. So I added a lip of foil tape to prevent this, but my success went down. So let's see how they respond to the new and improved version. <laughs> Let's see what the boss man's up to today. Hey, look, a wine cork smeared with peanut butter. Ha! Like I'm gonna fall for that. Why'd he put it way out there anyway? I'm on my tippy toes trying to get a hold of the darn thing. Something smells fishy. It's fishy, I tell ya. Now look at this contraption here. Like this makes a lot of sense. People love to overcomplicate things. I think I'll just run back to the Jeep and eat some of that Irish spring soap he put in the glove compartment. <laughs> look at all the foil tape he put on here. Ha! Huh, like he's gonna fool me with that. Next thing you know, I'll be wrapping it with bubble foil. I bet the boss man can't do this. I'm hanging on by just my toenails and my tail. And now I'm stealing a seed and taking it home. Ha 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 Stupid bucket trap. This is stupid, but still way better than those silly snap traps. I got clocked in the head by one of those and I had a headache for a week. Now I don't know what the hell I'm doing. How the heck with the ramp and the hanging doohickey? I'll just jump in this way. That's stupid bubble foil. I wish he would have left it alone. I hate all these improvements. I'll go have a talk with the little bastard. <laughs> well, as you can see, the mice are enjoying the bucket trap even more than I am. It's quite a circus going on under there. <laughs> Got a lot of chuckles putting that video together. Yep, they're having fun with it. Definitely more humane than those snap traps. And the more improvements I make to it, the worse my success go is. So I'm just going to keep on improving it. And I'll keep you up to date with that. So I'm going to answer a few quick questions and wrap it up for this week. The first question is, why did I choose a Border Collie? A lot of you know I used to raise gun dogs. Well, I didn't really raise them. I trained them. Had a few. Okay. Many years ago, well, actually in the 80s when I started my artist career, um... I was doing dog portraits at the time, and I was hired to do a portrait of a Border Collie, and I just fell in love with the breed, mainly for their intelligence. But I go, one of these days, I'm going to own a Border Collie. And then after my last lab passed away, and then I met Lori, and she had a, she had a dog, and then when that dog passed away, um, I decided now's the time, I'm going to get a Border Collie, I'm glad I did, absolutely love the breed, but like I said before, they're not for everyone, they are a handful, and we even question our sanity here with the two dogs, <laughs> but so far so good. Lots of questions about deer, about processing deer, uh, people want to know, do I cut up my deer right away or do I let them hang? Well. In most cases, I only let them hang overnight, and I cut them up right away. For me, I, I'm getting the flavor that I want. It works out really good that way. Uh, and I mostly bow hunt. And once the weather gets like it is now, it's zero degrees outside. I don't bow hunt in that temperature, I'm trying to pull that bow back after sitting still in a stand for so long. And ah, it's not my thing. So I hunt mostly the early season. And if it's too warm to hang a deer, I might just hang it in the evening, through the night, pack that body with ice, have a fan blowing on it just to keep it cool, get at it first thing in the morning. If I had a climate-controlled meat locker, I might do things a little differently and hang them for a week, but I don't have that, never had that opportunity. 
And like I said, I just hang them overnight. Or if I, if I get one in the morning, I might cut it up that evening. Yeah. And, and they're wonderful. People often say they don't like venison because it's too gamey. Well, if you hang a deer in fluctuating temperatures, it's getting near freezing at night, and it's in the sun during the day, and it keeps going through these fluctuations for weeks on end. The longer it hangs, the worse it's going to taste. I get a lot of really positive comments from the venison that I process, always have, and it's, I swear it's just because it's cut up right away. I want to point out one thing that if you're like on a hunting trip and maybe you're staying in a motel, you don't have a place to hang your deer and you leave it in the back of your truck overnight and then you cut it up and you see like a lot of red polka dots in the meat, nothing to worry about, the deer's not sick. That's there because the deer didn't hang and drain. I had that happen to me one time years ago, that sort of situation, stayed in the motel, Got the, I cut the deer up the next day. It was all polka dots, but it's nothing to worry about. It's just because they didn't hang. All righty. Uh, lots of questions about underneath the cabin. If you've got a cabin on piers, you've got a crawl space beneath it, you're going to skirt it, you're worried about mold. And you should be. If you lay a tarp or some plastic over the ground, it's going to cut down on the moisture coming up from the ground, but you do want to ventilate it during the summertime. In the wintertime, I button it up. I want to keep it from freezing under there, especially if you've got pipes. So, best way to do that, give yourself two access doors to your crawl space and put a double door on each one where the inside door opens in and it's an insulated door. Just a layer of bubble foil will be fine. That one opens in and on the outside, it's a screen door with hardware cloth beneath the screen to keep the chipmunks and stuff from going through that. You want to keep the bees out from under there and all of that. So in the summertime, just leave that one door open inside. Screen door is keeping all the pest out. Winter time, close it up. You're good to go. Should be all the ventilation you need. So that's it. That's all I'm going to answer for today. I hope everyone had a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. We certainly did. Had a little issue with my truck there because the mice had chewed the wires. I've got some problems with that. It keeps draining the batteries flat. So I've got an issue in my wiring that I've got to deal with. But aside from that, things are life as normal up here. And as you can see, winter is upon us. And we've had two days of zero degrees. And yesterday it was a minus 18 windshield factor. <laughs> yeah. So we're right at it already. Our second winter at the cabin. Yeah. So... That's it for now, folks. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All the best to you, and God bless. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss